Long ago, there was a land called Ortis, surrounded by the deep blue ocean, hiding mysterious secrets. Therefore, everyone would be cautious when playing in the sea. Save me! Save me, please! Suddenly, jellyfish swam towards him, along with the jellyfish goddess Crystal, who governed the sea area of Ortis. She had the duty to take care of the marine environment and ensure the safety of those in distress at sea. Boy, you're safe now! As a result, the kingdom's residents were grateful, trusting and worshipping her as the guardian deity of Ortis. The greater the worship, the stronger Crystal's power became, allowing her to live on mainland and ensure the safety of humans and the seas. Time passed by, the kingdom of Ortis was established, and human life developed into a more modern era. Thus, sea vessels were born and continually improved, reducing the fear of the people when venturing into the sea. The number of people in need of Crystal's rescue decreased, turning the story of the jellyfish goddess into a legend in Ortis. With fewer believers in Crystal, her powers diminished, and she could no longer transform into human legs to walk on land. Human sea voyages continued, and in a vast number of journeys, accidents were inevitable. However, Crystal silently continued to rescue unfortunate people at sea and bring them safely ashore. <laughs> Recently, a strange event occurred when a person Crystal rescued fell seriously ill, with red marks resembling jellyfish stings. The rescued person was none other than the father of the powerful Count Aegis Otteville. Count Aegis was the youngest count ever, and he did not believe in gods. For his father, Count Aegis sought the best physicians everywhere but could not find a cure. This illness might be caused by a new type of jellyfish toxin. Unfortunately, we haven't had antidote for this. There will be a cure, for sure. I will investigate this and find an antidote for my father. You should check the sea and the jellyfish around the Ortis region for any contamination. We have never huh? encountered such a case before. Aegis decided to go to sea himself to see if there was any issue with the sea that night. When Aegis's boat was far from the shore, he noticed another boat pouring foul-smelling liquid into the sea. What are you pouring into the sea? He ordered his soldiers to launch boats for combat, preventing actions that would pollute the sea. The sailors on the other boat not surrender. Aegis and his soldiers fought fiercely, and both sides were injured. Unfortunately, Aegis lost balance and fell into the deep sea. Count Aegis woke up in darkness. Gradually, the room illuminated with colorful glow emanating from the jellyfish floating peacefully. Jellyfish! Am I under the sea? Aegis hmm. observed another figure in the room that hmm. looked like a jellyfish, but much larger than the others. <laughs> Huh? Are you awake? How do you feel? Are you the jellyfish goddess Crystal from the legend? Aegis always thought that his father's story of being saved by a beautiful goddess in childhood was a mistake. At that huh? moment, Aegis truly believed his father's tale. However, the jellyfish goddess Crystal did not shine brightly like the jellyfish before. That was because her powers had significantly diminished. It's me. This is the bubble soup to help you breathe underwater. I've already given you some. Now please drink more. Nevertheless, Aegis still looked at the strange soup with suspicion. Look, is this the man you recently rescued? Did he drink the soup? Yes, the man we recently rescued. He drank the bubble soup. Is there any problem? Upon hearing Crystal's confirmation, Aegis, in horror, knocked over the soup bottle. My father returned poisoned. It must be because of this strange soup. It's impossible! For a long time, bubble soup has only helped people breathe underwater. 
I will investigate what happened. Don't go anywhere. Crystal quickly dispatched jellyfish agents to gather information on any changes in the mm. nearby sea. She also left to allow Count Aegis to calm down. Mm. However, Count Aegis escaped as soon as the jellyfish goddess left. In the deep dark ocean without light, he couldn't determine the direction from afar. A luminous jellyfish guided him, creating a path through the darkness. As he swam, giant seaweed tried to entangle him. Aegis struggled to break free, but he quickly got breathless. Just as he thought he couldn't endure any longer, Crystal arrived in time, providing him with a bubble soup. You're so stubborn. If I hadn't arrived in time, you would have died in this filthy place. Luckily, the jellyfish agents noticed the strange black seaweed and reported back to Crystal. The seaweed used to be green, then emitted a foul odor and is filled with waste. This is probably the jumping point of the sneaky people last night. Crystal tried to untie Aegis, but a sea witch Bellatrix appeared, controlling the seaweed to tie her. <laughs> Look who came to visit, the jellyfish goddess Chrysal. Bellatrix, a sea witch, always clashed with Crystal because she wanted to turn the ocean into a dead sea. In the past, Crystal's power was strong enough to seal Bellatrix. Now, Crystal's weakened power caused the seal to break. Meanwhile, Bellatrix was growing stronger by absorbing the pollution thrown into the sea by human. Bellatrix observed Crystal. After Crystal safely brought Aegis's father ashore, Bellatrix introduced toxic algae into him. It turned out that Bellatrix had used these toxic algae to poison the people, causing them to become ill with rashes resembling jellyfish stings. Crystal was furious when she learned that the people she had saved were haunted by Bellatrix. Chrysal, witness my power. I will destroy the humans you always protect. Crystal did not let Bellatrix attack. She forcefully sprayed water, pushing the witch far away. Crystal called the jellyfish to untie Aegis, gave him the bubble soup, and brought him back to the shore. Aegis was quickly brought back safely to the shores of Ortis. Hmm. Count Aegis, please find a way to save the goddess Chrysal. Absolutely. I will call upon you when I have a plan to rescue the goddess Crystal. Aegis urged the boat owners to take their boats out to sea to collect trash and clean the Ortis Sea. He wrote an hmm. article about the greatness of the jellyfish goddess Crystal, accompanied by a painting of her, and had it printed in newspapers throughout the kingdom. The reputation of the Audeville family contributed to increasing credibility and the article was well received by countless people. A statue depicting Crystal was quickly erected to express the gratitude of Ortis mm. residents. The statue had a precious crown symbolizing her nobility. In a short period, the number of people trusting and adoring Crystal increased significantly. <laughs> Aegis felt the time had come to rescue Crystal and restore her strength. Jellyfish! Take me to the location of the goddess Crystal and use this shield to protect her. Back underwater, Crystal's powerful waves made Bellatrix dizzy and forced her to rest and recover. The longer Crystal was held captive, the more exhausted she became. Suddenly, the kelp tightened around Crystal, causing her pain. She looked up and saw Bellatrix had awakened and was using dark magic on her. What are you doing to me, Bellatrix? Before eliminating you, I will take all your power. Suddenly, artillery descended, shaking everything. Bellatrix stopped draining Crystal's power to protect herself. Aegis arrived with a crown from Crystal's statue. He used a bubble soup to dive, rushed toward Crystal, and handed her the magical crown. This crown carries a message from everyone. Thank you for always protecting Ortis. Crystal felt the love of the people, and her strength returned. Everyone has been through a lot. Now I will handle everything. Mm. 
the dust settled after the upheaval, and Bellatrix emerged from the protective layer, witnessing Crystal regaining her power, so she attacked in anger. Crystal retaliated, controlling the jellyfish tendrils to capture Bellatrix and using her strength to turn her into small algae. Crystal gathered those algae for research on an antidote and then brought Aegis back to everyone. In the end, Crystal had restored her strength thanks to the belief and love of her devoted worshippers. What would happen if one day you found yourself swapping bodies with your sister? Ah! What have you done, Ellie? Subscribe to War Fairy Tales to follow the story. In the Kingdom of Liberty, there were two very different princess sisters, from their hobbies to their appearances. Therefore, conflict often arose between them. Do you have no other clothes to wear? You look so plain. <sighs> Don't care about me, okay? Ellie, the younger sister, was very studious and often called a bookworm by her older sister, Pearl. In Ellie's eyes, Pearl was a very beautiful person who liked to dress up and participate in luxurious parties. Pearl's rebellious and interesting personality made her have many friends around her. Meanwhile, Ellie was not pretty, had no friends, and only filled her loneliness with knowledge. <gasps> All day long, you only know how to read books. You're not pretty and also boring. <laughs> Perhaps the only person who treated Ellie gently was Blake, a prince from a neighboring country. <laughs> Ellie had secretly fallen in love with Blake for a long time. Then, one day, she gathered up the courage to confess her love to Blake. You and Blake are not from the same world. Give up that idea. Pearl easily got everything she wanted, so she never tried to understand Ellie. Why are you crying? It's nothing. Even if I say it, you won't understand. Maybe Pearl was right. Hmm. Ellie felt she wasn't good enough for him, coupled with her introverted self-esteem. Ellie decided not to confess her love to him anymore. Are you feeling sad? Let me tell you a story. Okay. Mm. Once upon a time, there was a pure-hearted forest goblin. Because of its peculiar hobby of collecting <gasps> mysterious and unusual objects, huh? it was shunned by everyone. Mm. But the goblin never wanted to harm anyone. On the contrary, what it longed for was to help those with pure souls. The goblin lives deep in the forest, <laughs> far from humans and desires to help those who are sincere. Ellie, do you want the goblin's help? Yes, please. Thank you, Blake. I know what I have to do. If that goblin really exists, it is the only one who can help Pearl understand her heart. Pearl will definitely regret it. Ellie went deep into the forest, scanning through every tree to find the goblin. It is a goblin! Finally, I found you! What do you need help with? Ellie explained all the conflicts between herself and Pearl. Can you make my sister experience my loneliness, please? Young girl, do you really care about your sister? All right, I'll help you. Hmm. Next morning, Ellie woke up 
and was amazed to see her sister's beautiful face and shiny hair in the mirror. She was stunned to realize that she had swapped bodies with her sister. What did you do, Ellie? I'm sorry. Yesterday I accidentally made a wish with a forest goblin. What? Are you insane? How dare you mess with the dark magic of those creatures? Someone who is jealous of other people's lives like you and never tries to improve themselves won't get anywhere. But it's also your fault. You never try to understand what I've been through. You're the one to avoid. Stop talking. You have to solve this for me. Let's go. The two argued without paying attention to the strange goblin eyes appearing on the wall. They went into the forest, but couldn't find the goblin anymore. Hey, you're hurting my foot! Is it the time to talk about that? Let's go back and use your intelligence to find a solution. You don't have to be so bossy all the time. They returned to the castle and read many books in the library to find a way to undo the spell. Huh? <gasps> Suddenly, Pearl's posh friends walked in. Pearl, let's go out and play. <gasps> Are you talking to me? Who else would I be talking to? Come on, we still need to prepare for tonight's party. <gasps> Thank goodness you're here. Help me quickly. My mischievous little sister made a deal with a goblin, and now we've switched bodies. Her friends didn't believe her and <laughs> sneered at her with contemptuous eyes. <gasps> a goblin? What's wrong with your little sister, Pearl? She suddenly talks nonsense. <gasps> Let's go, or we'll be late. <gasps> searched everywhere for help, but nobody believed her. The king was away at war and couldn't help her. Pearl felt invisible to everyone. She realized that Ellie's life was too lonely without any friends. Pearl, desperate, went back to the library to research. She pulled a book out and a door appeared. She walked in and discovered that it was Ellie's research room. The younger sister had invented many inventions that surpassed the times, which could improve people's lives. <gasps> it turned out that her sister filled her loneliness through invention. Pearl gradually felt regretful for being insensitive to Ellie. Meanwhile, Ellie was living happily in Pearl's body. Her best friends invited her to a fancy dance party. At the party, many guys were flirting with Ellie, but she only paid attention to Blake. Ellie and Blake had a fun time together all night. <laughs> huh. Did you just go out with Blake? Be careful. I have a feeling he's not a good guy. <gasps> Whatever. Just leave me alone. I'm tired and I want to sleep. Huh. <laughs> Try to find a solution to this problem. <sighs> After days of partying, Ellie started to become arrogant like her sister. She would scold her servants just because they accidentally brushed her hair too hard and made it hurt. She even insulted a friend's outfit and made her cry. Behind her glamorous appearance, Ellie lost herself more and more. Seeing Pearl lonely with no one by her side, Ellie secretly felt that she deserved to be her sister. I wish I didn't have to go back to my old body. I want to become Pearl. 
<laughs> Hello, Ellie. Oh, so mm. you've been keeping an eye on us? That's right, and I have a way to help you. Actually, my magic only works for one week. If you want to switch bodies with Pearl forever, you'll have to find a way to lure her to a secret location in the Forbidden Forest. There, I will cast a curse to let you stay in this body. Ellie agrees without hesitation. She's become too <laughs> caught up in Pearl's life and doesn't want to go back to the lonely days before. The next day, she lies to Pearl that the goblin has agreed to help them. Returning to their original bodies will be more difficult, so they need to perform a magical <laughs> ritual in the forest. Pearl has no doubts and follows Ellie. They both arrive at the goblin's appointed location. Okay, Ellie. I'm fine. Let's keep going. Hmm. Pearl's concern made Ellie start to feel guilty about her life. They reach the meeting point, which is a place with two large stone slabs with mysterious patterns under a giant oak tree. Hmm? <laughs> well done. You've made it here. Now, Pearl, step onto the stone slab first. Her soul was slowly being sucked out. Memories of Pearl appeared on the adjacent stone slab. Ellie was shocked as she witnessed the conversation between Pearl and Blake. Why do you want to approach Eli? What are your intentions with my younger sister? I like to play with her feelings. So what? I haven't done anything wrong. Just adding a little spice to this dull life. Stop this nonsense! You're not allowed to get close to Eli. I won't let you get away with it! It turns out that this was why Pearl didn't want ah. Ellie to confess to him. <laughs> At this point, the goblin laughed wickedly and transformed into Blake. <gasps> you guys are too easy to fool. Actually, I'm on my way to collect the 100th soul fragment to gain unmatched power. I will destroy both of your sisters and rule the kingdom. Huh. Human greed is truly a wonderful tool. You guys are on the side of good, but in the end, you'll end up harming each other. Uh, uh, Ellie saw uh, that Pearl's soul was about to be sucked out, and she rushed forward to hit Blake's weak spot between his legs causing him to scream and fall into the ground. Since Blake was the one who fell onto the rock first, his soul was sucked into a pearl. Uh. Pearl struggled to stand up and pulled Ellie out before her soul was also sucked away. They smiled at each other and smashed the pearl, causing his soul to vanish. Goblin dust suddenly surrounded Ellie and Pearl. <laughs> their souls flew up into the sky and returned to their old bodies. <laughs> I'm really sorry, sister. My selfishness caused trouble for you. It's okay. Everything is in the past. I also want to apologize to you for being too harsh and always hmm. criticizing you. The two sisters <laughs> looked at each other for a long time, silently thinking that they would <laughs> definitely find a way to make up for each other when they returned. They returned to the old castle just as the king returned. 
He was very surprised <laughs> that the two sisters had reconciled. <laughs> From then on, Ellie continued to use her intelligence to invent new devices that could help the people. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pearl stopped playing and focused on studying and loving her younger sister more. She taught her how to prepare and make new <gasps> friends. Ellie transformed from a nerd into a pretty princess. Although the two princesses had many differences, they learned to reconcile and love each other. Under the dim moonlight, the distinctive voice of someone resounded in the quiet space. Was it the singing of that fairy? But why was there such a dark light around her? Was there something hidden behind it? Let's find out now with Roa Fairy Tales. Once upon a time in a village, there lived two kind brother and sister named Ryan and Clara, who lived happily day after day together. Suddenly one day, when the two were on their way to work, they heard people whispering that crops were suddenly destroyed overnight. What happened? Huh? I don't know. It's unethical to sabotage our hard work these past few months. I think it was caused by a dark force, because last night I heard the ghostly singing of a woman nearby. Oh, that's scary. I don't know what else that force causes. What if she even threatens or kidnaps people like us to harm? That's right, so we need to look into this carefully. However, over the next few days, there wasn't anything unusual, and gradually the people just considered it a false rumor and then sank into oblivion. Until a full moon night, when Ryan was sleeping, he suddenly heard strange noises and ghostly voices around the house. He hastily ran to his sister's room to warn her to be careful with the dark forces that were present nearby. But Clara was nowhere to be found. Worried about his sister, Ryan decided to go out of the house to look for his sister, even though he knew he could confront the dark forces outside. However, when he saw Clara, she was transformed into a beautiful Luna witch and was sitting in the tree singing. And no, that curse of that witch has come true. As it turns out, Ryan and Clara came from a family who worshipped the moon. However, his parents sacrificed themselves to save him and his sister in a battle with the Dark Witch, who wanted to possess his family's moon power. The witch was eliminated. However, before leaving the world, that witch had made a curse on Clara. Even if I lose, but that kid, she will be possessed by me and become a Luna Witch at the age of 18 on the night of the Red Full Moon. More than that, she will use the moon's power to harm the people around her. <laughs> Ryan was very scared at that time and looked at his little sister in his arms. Luckily, before his parents passed away, they told him how to lift the curse. Right. If that curse comes true, remember to go to Wonderland and ask for the help of the mysterious deer gods there. We believe you will protect your sister well. <gasps> Ryan nodded and tried to remember his parents' words. Because he was too young at the time, he now remembered that the curse actually haunted his sister when she was 18 years old. Waiting for the moon to fall, Clara returned to normal. Then Ryan sneakily took his sister home. After a while, Ryan realized that Clara only transformed on full moon nights, and she hadn't harmed anyone and did not remember what happened when she woke up. However, he did not want to let his sister live in this form forever and was afraid that when Clara found out about this, she would panic. So he decided to set out to find a way to lift the curse for his sister. Clara, I have to go away for a while. Stay at home, be obedient, 
take care of yourself, and especially remember not to go out on full moon nights, as well as tie yourself up on this day if I haven't come back in time. <gasps> but why don't you take me with you? And why can't I go out on full moon nights? Uh, I can't explain this yet, but trust me, and remember to do what I tell you. Mm. Afterward, Ryan parted with Clara and went to Wonderland. <gasps> On the way to the dark forest, Ryan encountered an old woman carrying a lot of heavy things on her shoulders. So he asked to help her and took her home. <laughs> when she heard Ryan talk about the journey to Wonderland, the old woman was startled and warned him. The road there is extremely difficult and dangerous. It is difficult for anyone to find that dear God. So it is better if you come back. But I must lift the curse for my little sister. I can't let her suffer with a terrifying secret that will cause troubles for her forever. If you really want to do that, then here are some things that will help you. <gasps> Always carry this small knife and this stone with you. They will help you a lot along the way. Thank you very much. After that, Ryan continued to find the dear god of Wonderland. Along the way, he overcome many difficulties and dangers. However, with the help of the stone, Ryan was finally able to cross the dark forest, get rid of the creatures around, and reach the gates of Wonderland. Ryan was overwhelmed by the fairy beauty of this place. However, as soon as he entered the gate, the fairy scene suddenly changed completely and swept him inside. When Ryan woke up, he saw the god deer being extremely fierce and scary in front of him. Oh mortal, how dare you trespass into the wonderland of the mighty god deer, where I dwell. Please forgive me for my transgression. I do not intend to invade this land, but just want to ask you to save Clara, my poor little sister, from the curse of the old dark witch. That's impossible. Originally, my strength came from these old horns, but I was harmed by the witch, so I lost a part of my strength, and I was no longer able to turn back into a human. Therefore, if I have to sacrifice a part of my strength, I'm afraid I won't have enough strength to survive anymore. You should have come back. Please help me, or my sister will forever become a witch. Well, it has nothing to do with me. But if you're still stubborn like that, don't blame me for being short-tempered. Saying that, the deer god rushed to attack Ryan. He still tried to resist and made the deer horn stop. At that time, Ryan noticed that the deer's horn was missing a piece that was very similar to the handle of the small knife he was holding. He managed to break the blade despite the deep cut on his hand and put the handle on the deer's horn. Suddenly, a light flashed across Wonderland and helped the deer god to return to his original beautiful magical shape. It turned out that the handle was the long lost horn of the deer god. He was very glad to thank Ryan. Thank you for helping me get back into my original form. <laughs> and to show my gratitude, I will heal your hand. As well as repay you with this gem. If your sister eats this gem, it can help your sister lift the curse and become a human. Thank you very much, dear God. Now let's go back to your village. When Ryan returned to the village, it was coincidentally the day of the red full moon. He rushed into the house to look for Clara, but his sister was nowhere to be found. At this time, Ryan suddenly heard the loud screams of the villagers, so he rushed to see. As it turned out, Clara had transformed into a Luna Witch in front of everyone, so they were very scared and aggressive, wanting to attack her in defense. I didn't do any harm to you! But why are you treating me like this? If you think I'm so cool, then I'll play the part! Clara, please stop! Don't harm people and lose your kind nature! 
Moreover, I have finally found a way to lift the- I don't need anything anymore! Now I just want to destroy all of you! <laughs> the bright moonlight of the red moon shone on Clara, making her seem <gasps> to lose her mind and become a different person. <gasps> well, this ghost body is finally mine! Now I will use your sister's own hand to avenge the feud of the witches! <laughs> Realizing that Clara had been completely controlled by the old witch's spirit, Ryan tried to console her. Clara, please stay awake and try to fight for yourself. Don't let the dark forces defeat you. Our parents and I don't want you to get hurt like that. It's no use! Your sister didn't hear anything! Saying so, the Luna Witch Clara shot magic at Ryan and injured him. Even my sister can't hear anything right now. But please, after this battle, free Clara! I would trade this life for my sister. Well, if he voluntarily surrenders, <laughs> it will save my energy. But just wait. After vanquishing him quickly, I will turn around and defeat this girl. All right, I'll do you a favor after defeating you. However, when the Luna Witch Clara was about to shoot magic at Ryan, he quickly mm. threw the gem at Kiara. A light flash, causing the witch's spirit to be eliminated and helping his sister return to her normal self. It turned out that while Ryan was knocked down last time, he had found the gem and tried to use his words to distract the attention of the witch Clara in order to conduct the plan. Ryan and Clara were finally <laughs> able to lift the curse and told the old story to the people. After that, the people and they continued to build the village more and more developed and better for many years to come. Look, the beautiful girl is being swallowed up by a cyclone. Can she escape? Let's follow Woa Fairy Tales to see what will happen next. Once upon a time, there was a cute girl named Dorothy who lived with her parents in a small farm. Life just passed by peacefully until one day a big storm came and brought a cyclone to the little farm of her family. Dorothy! Quickly! Get back to her house! We need to get down to the bunker immediately! Dorothy heard clearly what her father had said, but she was swallowed up by the cyclone while trying to save her dog. She was whirling inside the cyclone and got fainted. She thought that everything is over. Suddenly, she was woken up by a bitter call for help. She opened her eyes and looked around. Huh? She saw herself sitting on a green pasture with colorful flowers around. Dorothy came closer to the call. Then she saw a little fairy who had been stuck in a bush. She tried her best, but she couldn't escape because her foot had been stuck among the plants. Dorothy quickly came there to help the little fairy escape from the bush. Thank you, my savior. How can I do to repay you for saving my life? Can you tell me where it is? This is fairyland. You are not the one who lived here, right? I was accidentally whisked here by a cyclone. I just want to go back home. Can you help me, please? Hmm, my magic power is not enough to help you. But maybe the Wizard of Oz can do it. Just follow this path huh? and you will reach the Land of <laughs> Oz. Thank you for helping me. I will find the way to the Land of Oz immediately. Hmm. Please wait, huh? I have a gift for you. Huh? huh? This is a precious necklace. It will protect you on your next journey. Good luck! Dorothy <laughs> smiled and said goodbye to the little fairy. Then she set out, following the instructions of the little fairy towards the land of Oz. She met a scarecrow, which was being annoyed by the crows. They were pecking continuously at his face, making his straws fall out. Feeling pity for him, she rushed there to chase the crows away to help. Thank you, kind girl. You helped me escape from the lousy crows. What are you doing here? I lost to here, and I'm on my way to the land of Oz. 
asking for the great wizard to bring me back to my sweet home. Oh my god! Huh? Can I go with you? I also want to beg him to give me the intelligence. I have been living with a straw brain for my whole life. Of course you can, so let's go! But can mm. you get me out of this wooden pile? Huh? My body was fixed here. I cannot move. Dorothy joyfully untied the ropes for the scarecrow. Together they headed toward the land of Oz. Walking for a while, they saw a pile of tin on their path. Please, help me! I'm an old tin man, so my arms and my legs fall out all the time. Could you please help me install it back? Alright! Let us help you! Huh? <laughs> Thank you so much! Where are you going? We're on the way to the land of Oz for begging the great wizard something! So, can I go with you? I also want to beg him to give me a loving heart! I don't want to live regularly like this anymore! Dorothy and the Scarecrow <laughs> smiled and nodded to agree. <laughs> Then the three continued their journey. Finally, they could see the land of Oz. They just needed to cross the forest in front of them. Together, they crossed that forest. Suddenly, a ferocious lion rushed there, making Dorothy frightened and scream out loud. I won't harm anyone! Don't beat me! Don't beat me! Don't worry! We won't harm you! It's so embarrassing when being a lion but crying like that! Where are all of you going? We're on the way to the land of Oz for begging the great wizard to fulfill our wishes! So, can I go with you? Huh? Hmm. If you don't want it, that's okay, but I also want to beg him for a little ferocity, which a lion should have. Of course it's okay, let's go! Then they had another cute lion as their companion. Finally, they could reach the land of Oz. Hmm? Hmm? But there was a thing which made them surprised is that they could find the wizard nowhere. There was only the voice from a globe. Hello, I know what you want. But to be honest, I can do nothing for you at the moment, although I really want to do it. My great wizard, can I ask what happened to you? I had a fight with the Wicked Witch of the North, and I had been harmed by her. She had even taken my scepter away and sealed me inside this globe. So what can we do to help you? If you want to break the seal, there is only one way. Then you have to go to her place and take back the scepter for me. But huh? she is really cruel and dangerous. It looks like I will have to stay here for a long time. So let us go there and find the way to take your scepter back. No, it's too dangerous. Please rest assured, we have four. We can protect each other and come back here safely. That's alright, but be careful and keep yourself safe. They said goodbye to the Wizard of Oz and set out to the castle of the Wicked Witch of the North. When they got there, they were really confused while seeing so many guards outside the castle. They didn't know how to enter. That's right! Every castle has a back door, so we will sneak into the castle by that back door. So, uh, so let's go. Uh, however, can I go in the middle? The three <laughs> remaining left. Then they followed the bushes and snuck into the castle by the back door. Getting inside, they immediately saw the scepter, which was placed next to her throne. They were really glad because they thought that they would take the scepter easily. However, suddenly, they heard a creepy laugh. <laughs> Look at yourself, stupid lads! You think you can fool me? 
We want to come here to take back the scepter for the Wizard of Oz. If you give us the scepter, we will leave immediately without disturbing you. Ha 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 ha! So ridiculous! So funny! You're so confident! All right, if you want to stick your head into an oven, I won't mind sending you to hell! <gasps> then she casted a spell to summon a swarm of bees to attack them. Lion! Dorothy! Just hide behind our back! Tin Man and I will cover you! The bees can do mm. nothing to us! The bees flew to attack Tin Man and the Scarecrow aggressively, but indeed they could do nothing to them. Then the bees had to give up. The witch was really angry. Then she ordered her dark soldiers to attack them. Don't ever try to touch my friends. The lion bravely fought against the dark soldiers to protect his friends. Although he won, he got injured seriously. His body was bleeding. The lion collapsed, gasped for breath because of his pains. The witch was raged. She used her scepter to attack him. At that very moment, the tin man rushed there, right in front of his friends, to cover them. And he got a critical attack. His body was broken into pieces. Oh my god! Why are you so foolish? Are you okay? Don't worry about me. I'm happy to see that you're safe. You cruel witch! You will have to pay the price for harming my friends! I'm waiting to see what can you do! And against all odds, Dorothy rushed there to take the scepter from the witch's hand. But she was weaker, so she was not far away. <laughs> She raised the scepter, intended to give Dorothy the last hit. Suddenly, the necklace shone and created a light shield to protect her. Taking the advantage, Scarecrow used the straws on his body to throw at the witch, blocking her view. Despite the serious injuries, the Tin Man still tried his best to crawl to her place to block her way. And the lion pounced upon her, making the scepter fly out. Dorothy moved forward and took the scepter. She pointed the scepter to the North Witch in confusion. You cruel witch! Huh? You deserve to be punished! Right at this moment, the ground cracked open, and the hands from underground reached up and pulled her under. The ground then slowly closed. After defeating her, they found a cart. They put the Tin Man into the cart and brought him back to the Land of Oz. The wizard was really happy when seeing them came back. Oh, my heroes! It's glad to see you came back safely! Please help me to knock the scepter on the ground three times! Dorothy did as what he had said. Suddenly, the globe was broken into pieces. Then the Wizard of Oz appeared. Thank you so much, my saviors. Come here and I will help you hear all the news. I know what you want to ask for, but is that the thing you've already had? Scarecrow, you always found out the clever ways to save your friends. It proves that your brain is not worse than anyone. And about you, you sacrificed yourself to make your friend safe. How warm your heart is. Oh, the good boy defeated the whole group of guards, and you still think you are a coward? My beautiful, brave girl, you just need to close your eyes and count to three. You can come back home immediately. Dorothy was so glad, but she stopped and thought for a while. Then came back to say goodbye and hold her friends tight. After that, she slowly closed her eyes and counted to three. When she opened her eyes, Dorothy saw herself sitting on the pasture next to the little farm of her family. The little dog was by her side and delightedly looked at her. 
Dorothy hugged her dog, <laughs> raised her eyes to see the sky, then she smiled. Maybe the memory about the Land of Oz would last forever in her mind, and she would never want to forget it. Once upon a time, legend has it that the Moon Goddess and the Demon of the Night fought tirelessly for seven days due to their opposing beliefs. The world was turned upside down, and the battle seemed never-ending as both were evenly matched. Finally, in order to protect the world, the Moon Goddess accepted the sacrifice of her life. It is said that she passed on her power to her descendants to continue her noble mission. Who is the Moon's descendant? Subscribe to Woa Fairy Tales to discover more. And then the day finally arrived. Diana, the princess with the moon-shaped birthmark on her forehead, cried as she was born. On the day Diana was born, people once again basked in the gentle golden moonlight. Her crying put an end to the long and dreary days as the cold and dark nights were enveloped. Diana was always a wise child and grew up with praise. At the young age of four, she learned the art of summoning magical beasts. With such a good start, everyone expected Diana to become even more exceptional. Diana not only was not allowed to fail, but she also always had to be in first place. As a result, whenever she saw someone skilled in something, Diana had to pursue them to strive to do better than them. As time passed, the pressures that weighed heavily on her shoulders turned Diana from a lively and joyful girl into a hesitant and fearful one. But Princess Diana has magic powers. Why can't she avoid the ball? She wasn't sure what that feeling was. But Diana was constantly exhausted and drained. Her sleep was restless, and at times, she lost interest in everything, including magic. Chubby Cat, I don't know what happened to me. Everything is going wrong. Chubby Cat, I've given it my all, but my performance keeps getting worse. Today, for the first time, I was even beaten by someone else in the magic exam. In that moment, I was truly frightened. My ears were ringing and I couldn't hear a thing. And the only magic I can still perform is summoning Chubby Cat. Magic has forsaken me. Oh my, how disappointing. What am I going to do now? If only Chubby Cat could speak, it would be so much easier. The queen passed away early and the king thought that the lack of maternal guidance caused Diana to become like this. So, the king decided to take a queen consort to train Princess Diana. Unlike the strictness of the king, the queen consort was very gentle and took great care of the princess. I heard that the princess has not been feeling well lately. This medicine is a panacea in our village and can help relieve stress. Whenever you feel tense, take one pill. Diana did not immediately use this strange medicine. <laughs> However, her worries became increasingly uncontrollable and the regular magic competition was approaching. She had no other choice but to close her eyes and swallow the pill. The medicine really worked, and Diana was less anxious, gradually regaining the use of her magic. But it was only temporary relief. Diana was like a burning flame, consuming one pill after another. One night, Diana realized that the medicine had run out and went to the queen consort's room to ask for more. That's how she discovered a terrible secret. The queen consort was actually a black magic sorcerer. Oh, mirror, mirror, please tell me where will Princess Diana lose the power of the moonlight? Your Highness has consumed all the medicine. Without the protection of the moon, you will take over this kingdom. Huh? Right at this time, the queen consort found Diana. 
or should have used magic to escape but couldn't. Her uneasiness turned her into a cat. Oh, the curse in the medicine bottle has taken effect. <laughs> well, what's happening? You'll find out when you get to the other side, my obedient daughter. <laughs> Chubby Cat, save me! Chubby Cat appeared and rescued Diana from the danger. Quickly, Princess Diana, climb onto my back. Oh my! Are you really talking, Chubby Cat? What should I do now? Why did everything turn up like this? With your current appearance, no one will believe you're a Princess Diana. They might even chase you away. The only solution huh? now is to find the Moonlight Scepter of the Moon Goddess to defeat the Queen Consort and break the curse. When they arrived huh? at the location where the old Moonlight Scepter had been sealed, they found that someone had beaten them to it. It was Ryan the Fox. As soon as Diana appeared, the boundary was broken as she was the descendant of the Moon Goddess. However, Ryan had been quicker and had already taken the scepter. Hey, thief! Give it back to me now! If you can't keep it, then find the new one! Oh, huh? what a romantic atmosphere! Calm down, little cat. I haven't asked about you yet. Let me welcome the handsome fox prince first. Ryan, it's time to hand over the scepter to me. It turned out that Ryan had made a deal with the Queen Consort. She had given him the crown of power, which would allow him to conquer the hearts of the people and become the king. In exchange, he was supposed to find the Moonlight Scepter and give it to her. During the search, the Queen Consort had turned Ryan into a fox to force him to work for her. It's not that easy, old lady. If I bring it to you, what if you turn me into an animal again? If you want it, turn me into a human first. Don't saw off the branch you're sitting on. <laughs> Chubby Cat, save him! Ryan still had the scepter, so Diana and Chubby Cat had to save him and escape. Diana, follow my trail! I will hold her off! Remember, using the scepter requires a magic spell! However, the Queen Consort was very quick. To allow Diana and Ryan to escape successfully, Chubby Cat had to sacrifice himself. No! Go! This was a big shock to Diana, when her only close relative, who had helped her, was no longer there. Even when she tried to summon Chubby Cat many times, Nothing happened, even when she used the Moonlight Scepter, which she thought would help her regain her magic. Why? Why won't you appear? Chubby Cat is the only one left in my life! Hmm. That's right! The magic spell! It's not that easy. Huh? Ouch! How dare you! Don't expect me to show you how anymore! Don't you have a way to do it? Do you trust me to throw you into a river to be eaten by a fish? <laughs> Calm down, handsome guy. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. The special thing about this magic spell was that it only worked at the moment of the transition to midnight on the night of the fullest moon of the season. The day was set for three days later. And if this time was missed, it would take a long time for another opportunity. Ryan, who had the same goal of defeating the Queen Consort, made an effort to help Diana regain her magic. They realized that during times when Diana was comfortable, she could temporarily transform into a human, even if it was just for a moment. There must be something that's causing you to panic like this, right? For the first time in her life, someone listened to the pressure of having to become number one as a princess. At the same time, Diana also learned that Ryan was actually a prince, but his mother was a concubine, and they both came from humble backgrounds, so they lived their lives in misery. The more Ryan tried to show himself as good, the more he was seen as fighting for the throne. To 
protect loved ones, huh? Ryan had no choice but to become the strongest, <laughs> even if it meant losing himself in desire. <laughs> I said that I was exhausted, but no one listened. Why wouldn't they listen? What about me? Two hearts, scarred by every step, <laughs> drew closer. Diana could remain human for a longer time, enough to carry out the plan. On the day of the fight, the two infiltrated the palace, precisely the room where the queen consort was practicing her magic. Seeing Diana regain her human form, the old queen was extremely surprised. Well, my daughter found a way to turn back into a human again, hasn't she? But it seems like it's only temporary, isn't it? Let's see how long your silver tongue lasts. So many words. My shadow demon, take good care of Prince Ryan. Huh? Don't worry about me. Seize the opportunity. As the full moon approached, the moonlight energy spilled through the window and flooded the room. Stop kidding around. You can only cast a spell relying on someone like you. What kind of moon air are you? You even lost your first place to ordinary people. Challenged with pressure, Diana started to tremble. Before the chant was even completed, Diana transformed back into a cat. The moment of the fullest moon passed, meaning they couldn't use the power of the moon scepter anymore. Yeah. My little princess, now there's no way to save you. But unexpectedly, Ryan sacrificed his crown and threw it towards Diana, creating a shield to protect her from the curse. Oddly enough, without the crown of power, Ryan could turn back into a human. I understand now. When I don't stubbornly pursue power, the curse will be broken. Diana, don't try to recite the moonlight incantation anymore. Use your own magic. Be true to yourself. Diana remembered the happiness she felt when she created magic. And remembered when her friend, the chubby cat, protected her. Diana bravely recited the familiar incantation, which was the first incantation she recited when she was young. <laughs> the magic light shone powerfully, and the fat cat appeared in a much stronger form than before. It strode towards the queen consort. Instead of being defeated, when the light disappeared, the queen consort transformed into a beautiful and gentle moon fairy she was originally a servant of the moon goddess, with a task of finding the air and assisting them in protecting the world. I realized that instead of directly helping the princess become more confident, it was necessary for her to overcome the challenges herself. Meanwhile, Ryan was the reincarnation of the night demon, the opposite ideology of the moon goddess before. The queen consort helped resolve their past grudges, while also learning a lesson herself. By sacrificing his crown for someone else, which was also abandoning his ambition, Prince Ryan was able to become human again. Similarly, like Princess Diana, without the pressure of surpassing others, being true to oneself was when she was the strongest. Ryan and Diana understood each other, becoming close friends and journeying together to protect a peaceful and beautiful world. The story ends here. Thank you for your support. Every view is a big encouragement for us to create more interesting stories. Don't forget to subscribe to WoA Fairy Tales to help us reach 1 million subscribers soon. Now, share with WoA Fairy Tales your feelings after watching today's story. See you in the upcoming episode!